Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to the How to Write a Book podcast. What is up? What is up? Uh, We are so happy to be back here. And as you all know, today is November 22nd. And according to the schedule that I have, it is approximately episode 22 of this month for NaNoWriMo. So it's day 22. Um, But... As you've uh, realized on the previous episodes, we've somehow had another small minor bump about the numbering system. So, hey, it's November 22nd. So if this is like day 20, day 21 or 22 for you, a way to go because you are crushing it. You are writing. And y'all, the most important thing is that writing is fun for you. So I'm wishing that for your entire process. All right. So today we're tackling the writer's block or toxic thought, which is no one is going to care what I write about. Oh yeah, I totally can relate to this. Now, actually this um, has permeated its way through not just my writing, but then also with podcasting and eventually the YouTube channel that I'm working on. And ultimately what I strive to do is to help other writers feel like they're not alone And also feel like as if they do not have to fit this box of what it's supposed to be uh, to be a writer. What it means to be a writer. I want them to feel and accept how they are as a writer. And to know that that process and however they write a novel is normal. So that this way they can overcome their writer's blocks. Uh, But sometimes I think to myself, well, you know, maybe someone's not really going to care if they want to hear this. And I think that that can also resonate with your writing. Like sometimes we might think... No one's really going to care about what I write. Now, let's just use an example that I use quite often, but in case you're not familiar, um, I absolutely love the author Virginia Woolf. Classic. Oh my gosh. If you ever read her work, uh, well, and if you haven't read her work, um, you would encounter her. She's like a very stream of consciousness writer is the closest that I can call her. And what I mean by that is that she talks a lot about being inside her own mind, you know, really trying to understand her thoughts and seeing the life and the environment in front of her and actually taking it in and questioning it and trying to understand her own purpose in the universe according to her environment. And a lot of the times, you know, especially in English classes, we get this idea that, you know, stream of consciousness or similar writing is not good. It's boring. It's just not what readers want to read. There's not enough action. You know, oh, you're boring. You're dragging me down. Things like that. We hear that a lot when it comes to English classes. And I want to let you know that, you know, if Virginia Woolf had been publishing today and with the same writing as she had, you know, I believe her work would be rejected because it doesn't follow those common rules that we have out there in the English and writing and publishing world. But you guys, man, if you read her work, she puts things in a way that make you feel like you're not alone. You know, how there's those moments when you kind of realize that you're living, you know, you look into a mirror or you look at your hands and you suddenly can hear your own heartbeat and the pulse within your body somehow feels much more alive. And when you look in the mirror, it's almost as if you're seeing yourself for the first time and you see the color of your skin and the way that your eyes look back at you and how you're breathing. And for me, when this happens, and it happens seldomly, but when it does, it's an out of body experience and it suddenly makes me feel very mortal and very vulnerable and this feeling is so rare i believe and it's so hard to describe that when i've tried to bring this up with friends or family you know i get blank expressions in return and the feeling is so beyond what i can really comprehend that even as I try to write it down on paper, nothing comes up. You know, I, I read it and there's absolutely no way I'm justifying what I actually felt. What's on paper cannot reflect what I felt. But when I read Virginia Woolf for the first time, it was as if she read my mind. It was exactly 
what I was feeling. And to read those words tangibly, you know, have the book in my hand and to understand that someone who died a long time ago, this woman who has gone through a lot of her history is very interesting. Um, to understand that there was someone out there who felt like me and who could see the world like I could. You guys, right? That having that resonance, that's what's important. I mean, of course, you know, having your income as a writer is ideal, reaching millions of people, but I am only one person and I am just so thankful. Thank God that Virginia Woolf wrote. I'm glad that she got up and she decided to face that blank page. And it was terrifying for her as it was for many writers. So what I'm trying to say here is that you do not know how far your work will reach. And even if you never know who you affected and who you inspired, at least have the belief in yourself that you yourself, it matters to you. And when you put pen to paper, you know, or typing, you're actually filling your muse and you're showing up for yourself. And so the person that is getting affected by your writing is you. So someone matters. Someone matters out there. That person is you to begin with. Your ideal self wants you to write and is so happy that you're showing up for the blank page. And beyond that, yeah, there really could be plenty of people who love your writing, who are inspired by your writing, who feel so grateful that you showed up. So I also want to say that you know, in case this thought bogs you down, then hold on to the hope that you know down the line there will be someone who's going to be so glad that they resonated with you and that you showed up because there really is always someone who just finds your work and says, wow, thank you. I thank you so much for showing up. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Masier Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themasiel.com. That's www.themasiel.com. We'll see you on the other side.